Hey, Rachel. Hey, Brian. So how was your week? I mean, not great, but um, better than Congressman Matt Gates, who <laughs> low, has low been yes. <laughs> low, low hanging fruit. He's been promoted from uh, just being a regular alleged child sex trafficker to an alleged international child sex trafficker. So that that is a big upgrade. Um, and he's going to be indicted any day now i think so um i'm dying so, to know more can we talk about it uh after well the, we'll uh, talk paper? about it in the nopes yes <laughs> okay well therefore this is nope <laughs> the podcast where we shut it down we're just a couple of new york jews talking about the news beating back the blues we made a podcast that news why have to laugh so we don't cry come and join us for the ride welcome to Okay, Rachel, we always love to acknowledge when we get good reviews and they keep flowing in, right? Yes, it's very exciting. So keep them coming. This is great. Yeah, I mean, we've seen it. This was the first time in one of the written reviews in Apple. And I also had multiple people say to me in real life that they love our theme song. And yes. one of them didn't even know that we sang it. They thought it was an actual song, which I guess it is. <laughs> and I'm realizing that we used to be a podcast with a theme song, and now we're just a theme song that happens to have a podcast. Have a podcast, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like one of those TV shows where the the show was never that popular, but the the theme song lives the theme on, song. like uh, the theme from The Greatest American Hero. Remember that? They were, right. They used family to be, ties. Yes. Yeah. Or Cheers. Well, Cheers is still a popular TV show, but yes. uh, everyone loved the Hill Street Blues. Those were all big, big uh, hits. Now, yes. TV shows don't even have theme songs. Okay. So, um, Rachel, how was your actual week? Anything interesting happen? Well, the only interesting thing that's happening out here is that Coco, my dog, her hair is out of control and it's becoming a problem, (laughs) not just because of how it looks and it's covering her eyes, but there are ticks that keep getting into her hair when we're out. And AJ has already had two tick bites on him, which is horrible. And you may ask, why is she not groomed already? What no, are I have you doing? A, I, have, I have a different question. <laughs> what is the question? <laughs> Far more pressing. <laughs> Given what how big Coco is, like there must be enormous square footage of hair. Like if you if you laid it oh, out, it's, right? It's how do enormous. you spot? How do you spot a tick in that hair? Well, because I can't spot them because they're hiding in the hair. But then they jump on us, and they can't bite Coco because she takes some kind of medication that makes ticks that repels ticks. But well, they can you could give get that to, stuck in her hair. Can you can give, give that, that to AJ? AJ? Yes. Why not? I I wish there was something we could take. I mean, no, but um, but I thought of it. Believe me, after the second tick. <laughs> okay. So so okay. So but back to my original question: Why is her hair this long? <laughs> why? The world why demands answers. <laughs> so. I, I made an appointment at the groomer and the groomer keeps ghosting me. I They canceled two appointments. And then the third one was supposed to be a couple of weeks ago. And I called in advance because I was like, this appointment is not going to happen. They keep canceling. And they... They said, no, 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 bring her in. So I so I drop her off. And an hour later, I get a call from the groomer saying that they had a medical emergency <laughs> and they cannot groom Coco. So can wait, I pick the, her up? Wait, did the groomer have an emergency or one of the dogs? I, I don't know. I don't know. I was so angry because, first of all, this was an hour earlier. So what was she doing? for? What was Coco doing for that hour? Just like well, we, all wait there, in, in, we all wait in doctor's <laughs> offices waiting for room so why should dogs be any different <laughs> they don't just then tell me to come at 10 i, I mean i brought her in at nine Doesn't anyway like that yeah so That's... so they say do you want to make another appointment you know and i'm like absolutely not i don't want to make another appointment you had one job <laughs> this is an epic failure you've canceled three Three appointments, one after I dropped the dog off. So I go, so I try to make another appointment at like three other groomers around here and nobody answers the phone. Like I'm like persona, non They don't need your business. They, the yeah, it's, like a con- it's like a contract. They don't want it. They don't need it. <laughs> yes. And so I'm leaving messages all over town and then I go and pick up Coco and the guy comes out and says like, we're really sorry. Um, you know, we will give you a free grooming next time for Coco. And so tomorrow I'm supposed to 
Wait, so you're going back off. to the same place? I'm going back. Well, because these other places never even it's called me a, back, and they're offering me a free grooming wait, session, so I'm going to do a, it. It's not a question of the price. Like, <laughs> it's free, and they're not going to do it. So their cost well, of the good, thing. their cost of goods is very low. Like, I, I know, I know. If they cancel again, I'm going to go crazy. It's like so. they give you a gift certificate for something they don't carry. Like they. Yeah, I know. And meanwhile, Coco looks like Crystal Gale right now. <laughs> I don't think our younger listeners know who that is, but I do. She's like a <laughs> chanteuse. <laughs> when was the last time the name Crystal Gale was mentioned in any media? <laughs> 1989 right including a crystal gale podcast of which i'm sure there's one okay no i was gonna shut this down yeah. but it's just your personal story let's go to the real notes you wanted it to please yeah uh, so i i have been working so hard i haven't looked at the news in the last day or two so i don't know what's going on with this matt gate story i need you to fill me in yeah, yeah, you've been so busy. So um, we decided to record the podcast on a Thursday instead of a Wednesday this week. And I'm so glad we waited a day because we have some really interesting developments in this Matt Gates scandal. Um, last week, we talked about this investigation regarding a 17 year old girl that he may have paid for sex and trafficked across state lines. And we mainly talked about this associate of his named Joel Greenberg, the former tax collector for Seminole County, Florida, who's now in prison for literally every crime <laughs> under the sun. <laughs> and he's awaiting trial in June, right? Well, today got very, very interesting because Joel Greenberg had a hearing where he was expected to enter a not guilty plea. But instead, oh. his lawyer said they're working out a deal, which likely involves turning Incre state's evidence against his buddy Matt Gates, right? Oh, not such a yeah. good buddy anymore now that not you're such facing a, good... a prison sentence. <laughs> no. <laughs> Funny how that and, happens. <laughs> and who knows how many other people in Florida are going to get tangled up in this. So, I hope it's Ron DeSantis. My God, wouldn't that be yes, great? Yes, I, I know. That would be amazing. So outside the courthouse, the lawyer, whose name is Fritz Scheller, gets asked by a reporter about Matt Gates, and his answer was telling. Um, here's the clip. Does, does Matt Gates have anything to worry about? Does Matt Gates? That is such a <laughs> um, does When he it have comes any, to what happened today in court, does he uh, have anything to worry about? And you're asking me to get into the mind of Matt Gates, right? And uh, well, from your mind, from my mind, based on what your client does. Based on what my client knows, okay. See, I thought if I kept on talking and talking, I would avoid these questions <laughs> and, and not to say, um, I'm sure Matt Gates is not feeling very comfortable today. All right. Okay, I hope that worked. The thing you sent me before was not actually a sound file. <laughs> so if you heard dead air there, no, I'm gonna, that's no, why. My, my plan is to send you a better file. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just to prepare, because it's edit editing this is hard enough. But okay, continue. Okay, so um, so yes, he's sure that Matt Gates is not feeling very comfortable today, which is an understatement. Um, okay, so to back up just a bit, um, earlier this week it was revealed in the New York Times that Matt Gates sought a blanket preemptive pardon from Donald Trump, even though Trump denied it, which means it's definitely true, um, and so. But why seek a pardon if you're not guilty of some type of crime, right? Yeah, and that was uh, when they were saying, like, is Trump going to pardon himself or pardon his family? They were saying that that could, you know, uh, prejudice against future things because it, it speaks to his state of mind or something. I'm not a lawyer, but there's, you know, it, it, it helps you against that particular prosecution, but it could also hurt if the prosecution broadens things. or something like yeah I, I don't know yes. i'm probably misspeaking that but something like no that. but this guy basically wanted a preemptive pardon for like crimes he may against, commit in crimes the future against humanity <laughs> right crimes against the state crimes against everybody so 
So he did not get that part in. Um, and so that was one thing. And then it was also revealed this week that the investigation into Gates is focusing on a trip he took to the Bahamas with the Florida hand surgeon and marijuana <laughs> entrepreneur named Dr. Jason Pirazzolo. Wait, of course. Why are they always hand, hand surgeons? <laughs> Like there's always a hand surgeon involved Is in there? every scandal. They're the worst. Yes. <laughs> They've got a hand in everything. Everything, a finger in every pie. <laughs> Literally, a different finger in every pie. Someone else's finger. <laughs> okay, so it's a hand surgeon. And he's a marijuana entrepreneur as well. And so Dr. Perizzolo allegedly paid for Matt Gates's travel to the Bahamas and all of his accommodations, including prostitutes, which may or may have not been procured by Joel, Joel Greenberg. Greenberg. <laughs> so now Matt Gates is not just trafficking women across state lines for sex, but possibly across international borders, <laughs> yes. um, which is a whole other level of crime. So and he, a separate it crime. might be a crime against humanity. He might be tried at the Hague for this. Yes, <laughs> Matt Gates might be. Yeah, and maybe the hand surgeon too. <laughs> And everybody, I don't know. So, um, so he may also be exchanging political favors for gifts of sex because right around the time of this trip, he suddenly took a keen interest in marijuana legalization and even introduced a piece of legislation called the Medical Cannabis Research Act that never came to a vote, but Which nevertheless, is str strangely progressive for Matt Gates, right? For that Matt doesn't Gates, seem like the kind he of thing he would jump on that bandwagon, right? No, in fact, he's one of the only. Republicans who is for this. Okay. So, so, okay. And by the way, there is also a video circulating and you mentioned governor DeSantis before. I don't know if you saw this video, but it's Dr. Perizzolo standing on the tarmac. <laughs> Operating with governor... on Ron DeSantis' hands. <laughs> standing... <laughs> Standing with DeSantis and his wife as Donald Trump and Melania get off Air Force One and greet all of them with like hugs old and friend, handshakes yeah. and old friends. OK, so this is just like what happened, what we were talking about last week with the Seminole County tax collector going to the White House, <laughs> yes. Matt Gates. Why is Dr. Pirazzolo, hand surgeon and marijuana entrepreneur extraordinaire, though he may be, why is he part That's of the because, welcoming committee? Uh, this is so obvious to me. The reason Trump is so proud of his hands is because they are the work of Dr. Pirazzolo. <laughs> he enlarged them. <laughs> he enlarged his fingers. Hello, doctor. Do you do hand enlargement surgery? He pioneered. He pioneered this technique. <laughs> Written in all the medical journals. Like you know how like <laughs> Brazil is known for like butt lifts. Yes. Like the Mar-a-Lago area is known. <laughs> For hand enlargement. Well, hand enlargements, I can see you could put some sort of like Restylane in it or something. But what about hand reductions? Like, where do you, do you like remove a bone? Where do you go? I, I don't, <laughs> Dr. Perizzolo is not the person to go to for that. No, is it like when you remove a rib so you could look skinner? Do you like remove the like middle joint of your. You have to take your, joints <laughs> out. You have to take bones out. Just have like stubby. <laughs> But does, the question is, is there a market for that? <laughs> There's pent-up demand in Mar-a-Lago. Mar-a-Lago is the hand surgery capital of America. Okay, let's keep moving on this. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So while Matt Gates must be like shitting his pants privately, he's publicly still pretending that this is all some big witch hunt. And he's actually the keynote speaker at a conservative conference being held at Trump's Doral golf course. And the conference started today. It runs through Sunday and it is hosted by, I shit you not, Women for America First, which is like women for Trump, which is also like Jews for Hitler. So a pro-Trump entity for women is hosting an event with a keynote speech by a person who may be arrested for pedophilia and sex trafficking before he even reaches the podium. Who, who are the women who constitute this? <laughs> who are these women? I I can't imagine. Like, there's, it's so embarrassing to be 
a woman for Trump. And here you are like hosting an event and being out and about and public about it. Like, it's so gross. Like, I, I can't even... I'm Googling who are women for Trump. Who, who are for okay. Trump. <laughs> yeah, there's some woman, her last name is Creamer. Amy yeah, Creamer. Amy Creamer and Catherine Sirks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. No. Anyway, so um, so this is the final thing on this. I mean, as I told you, Brian, I'm totally obsessed with this story. But Matt Gates's office released a really strange statement today that felt very um hostagey. The headline, did you see this? No, I saw nothing. Okay. The headline of the press release was the women of US Congressman Matt Gates's office speak out in defense of Matt Gates. Okay. Oh, so it's so, so these are like women who work for him who are saying like our boss is a good guy. Yes. Okay. So it starts by saying after shocking allegations last week in the press, we the women of Congressman Matt Gates's office feel morally obligated to speak out. And it goes on to talk about how he's like a principled and grounded leader. They've never seen any of this behavior. But the thing that's odd about it is it's unsigned and none of these so-called women <laughs> identified themselves so it was totally written by matt gates <laughs> well right? it's like trump he's like writes his he pretends to be yeah. his own publicist and uh so no women were involved in the production of this, <laughs> of this, of this <laughs> statement <laughs> So uh, anyway, I thought that was okay. really interesting. And he's so deeply fucked. I, I think he's going to be resigning very, very soon. And of course, screaming about cancel culture the whole time. So Women for Trump, enjoy your um, keynote speech. <laughs> <laughs> Just call him Women for Trump. And Rachel, I'll let you shut it down. <laughs> okay. Nope. Absolutely not. No. No. Nope. Nope. Okay. No, thank you. No. Um, okay. Let's move on. We have another, uh, you know, story on the the residue of the Trump era. Yeah, like the as we said last week, like the dry heaving after <laughs> <Right>. vomiting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thought so, it was all out, but it's never done. But no, there's still <laughs> some left. So the New York Times had a great scoop this week about how oh, the Trump campaign stole millions of dollars from donors by soliciting donations and then automatically checking a box in the email to make sure in the on the website to make sure that the donations recur. So it's really hard for me to muster sympathy for these people, even though one of the main people in the story had cancer and is now dead. Um, so th that person's name is Stacy Blatt. He's a 63 year old. It's a man named Stacy. He's a 63 year old who it was happens. living on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do know another man named Stacy. Um, Stacy Keach, the actor, yeah, yeah. you know. So <laughs> anyway, so Stacy Blatt is let's living talk, on. Let's talk about that some more. <laughs> let's talk about men named Stacy because that's a whole episode's worth of conversation. It's good content. Okay. <laughs> men named Dana, men named Stacy. Okay, continue with the story, please. Yeah, I got I got a little off track. So <laughs> so, <laughs> so Stacy's living on a thousand dollars a month in Kansas City and he sees Rush Limbaugh begging people to donate to the Trump campaign in September when um, the Republicans were really behind the Democrats in donations and being outspent every day. So Stacy decides, you know what, I'm going to donate $500 to Donald Trump, even <laughs> half, though I half, only half live of his net worth. <laughs> yes. So imagine just like how horrible and racist you have to be to be dying and living on a thousand dollars a month and thinking, yes, this, this, <laughs> this is, is the cause. This man is going to solve my problems. <laughs> yes. This who's is what already been president to. for four years. This is, yes. the, this is the $500 that's going to save. This me. is, this is the thing. So Stacy is going along with his, his um, chemotherapy and all of a sudden the next month like his lights go out in in his apartment his utility and rent check bounced his bank account is closed it's totally empty and that is because the Trump campaign was withdrawing $500 a week 
from a week account. <laughs> yes. So this is happening all over town. There's a pianist in New York City who accidentally donated ninety thousand dollars to the Trump campaign, Wait, which is what, well over. <laughs> in what denomination? Like, was it nine hundred dollars a month? There was over there was over a hundred donations that were registered, and this pianist didn't even notice that this money was coming out of their account anyway so it's well over the legal limit of twenty eight hundred dollars ninety thousand you cannot contribute ninety thousand so so this person got a refund of eighty seven thousand seven hundred and sixteen dollars imagine that tax refund day like yeah so i mean who is this trumpy pianist in new york city by the way that's the real to... that's the real question what musician what artsy musician lives in new york city and gives to trump like who is we have to find out who that is but so anyway my point is these stories are everywhere they're in kansas city they're in new york city they're they're up they're down okay and so of course <laughs> this whole this whole thing is by design there's a guy named gary kobe who is a friend of jared kushner and he has the title of digital director of the trump campaign and it was his idea the campaign decides to make the recurring donation checkbox opt out instead of opt in. So it's already checked when you go in there and it's hidden under this like jumble of text. So you don't really see it. And the whole, it's called a money bomb. Yeah. Have you yeah. heard and of it's that? A, yeah. yeah, no, I, I should interject here. I've spent most of my yeah. career involved in like subscription services to like software products and things like that. And there's a very clear body of law about how to do this. There's a thing it has to be the, the billing num amount needs to be clear and conspicuous type, which means it can't be like little gray type. Um, in certain circumstances, it can't be pre-checked. You have to send a receipt after each time you send a rebilling. If you've ever done that, you get the receipts. They even have a best practice, which is you're supposed to send. It's called a link letter You're supposed to send an email before you get rebuilt some people do that some don't that's not you don't have to um but there's a whole set of both laws and best practices this so does this not sound like it complies illegal. with any, <laughs> any of them yes i'm sure it's illegal <laughs> that's interesting okay i i mean i hope that they're that they do get sued but um the numbers are staggering so in november and december there were 530 thousand refunds from the Trump campaign <laughs> for more than 64 million dollars. <laughs> And when this is all over, there's going to be close to like 150 million in refunds or like 10 percent of all of the money that they raised. And by That's contrast, insane. It, it's insane. Biden issued 37,000 refunds compared to 530,000 worth 5.6 million. Biden's weren't because of this grift. They were probably no, just like No, it was because of thing. like someone accidentally checked the right. box or, or whatever, accidentally donated too much. Anyway, so... um. So how did Donald Trump and his campaign pay for all of these refunds, right? If they were struggling on cash and yeah, it's not like they're so liquid all it. the time. Yeah, they're, they're not right. Sitting. So how did they pay for it after the election? Well, they raised all of this money on this big lie that the election was stolen and they basically robbed Peter to pay Paul. It was an interest free loan from donors in the fall paid back by donors in the winter. <laughs> yes, they should have but to pay they thought that, on it. Yes, but they thought that their money was going to like this legal fight for the election, but it was just paying back donors. That That's incredible. Can I get like a down payment on a summer house for that? That way, like, can I just overbill someone and then like afterwards and, right. say, "Oops, give it back"? And just, it's a Ponzi scheme. That's what it is. It's a Ponzi scheme. It's a classic Ponzi scheme. And so I, I don't know. Like I've, I've seen some election experts saying that this might not be illegal, but you seem to think that it is illegal. And if it's not illegal, then we need to like change the law <laughs> because this seems so egregious and, and insane. But like the Republicans are embracing this as standard practice. I don't know if you saw this, but just um, yesterday, the uh, National Republican Congressional Committee, the NRCC, they did the same exact thing using the same font and the same like highlighter background. There was a checkbox next to small print that said, we need to know we haven't lost you to the radical left. If you uncheck this box, we will have to tell Donald Trump that you're a defector. <laughs> Sided with the Dems. Wait a second. First of all, there's like a triple negative in there. Um, and like a lot of these people can't even read, period. So like
like right that's confusing and then do you think donald trump is like santa claus like he's gonna get a list of the naughty and the, the naughty uh, yes. the, 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 the deflector the, the they're, they're a defector <laughs> they sided with the dems but like they're already giving money they're just saying they're not gonna give <laughs> again forever <laughs> This defector gave money once. They're you're, not defe- giving- <laughs> you're obviously a defector if you give money. Like, it's so rude. It's so disgusting. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah. So, so they're entitled. Um, they feel like they're entitled to your money. Um, if And they, they don't have to work hard to outsmart you. So they're just going to take what's theirs. Yeah. And so to all the people donating to Republicans and to Donald Trump in particular, you give your credit card to Donald Trump, you get exactly what you pay for, which (laughs) is is garbage to be robbed blind. (laughs) So I really have no sympathy for you. And you're just a nope as much as he is. It takes two to tango, you know? Nope to all of you and to the tango. And to the tango, (laughs) especially. (laughs) Okay. Shut it down. (laughs) <laughs> okay, uh, I'm okay. sick of politics. Could we do like some animal news? <laughs> let's say. Yeah, let's let's talk about something more important. So, okay, so this is like life. You go to the grocery store. You're getting your food. This is like you yeah, need as, it to as live. As you it's yeah. <laughs> You've established so, the foundation of the story now. Yes, I agree. It's more, yes. <laughs> so, um, okay, so. You, I have this notebook. <laughs> <laughs> Step one, need food to live. I, my, my text is very small. So. <laughs> okay. Okay, so you go grocery shopping. You walk to your car. Yes. You open the door. You pull out of the driveway and you hear some buzzing. And you turn around and there are 15,000 people. <laughs> Do you count them? How do you know? How many well, you there are? Only... <laughs> what do you do? You only find out after when oh, they're okay. taken out. You just know something is amiss. Right. So there's a New York Times story about this. This happened in New Mexico. There's a guy, he left the window down, went into the grocery store for 10 minutes. He comes back, he starts driving, and he calls 911 because something's Wait, not right. Did any right. of the bees get into the car when he got in? Because you'd think they'd be trapped in there with him. Like some of them would swarm They in. were all trapped in there. Yes. Because oh, he not- left the car window open. Oh, and I they're see. in the back seat. He's in the front seat. <laughs> oh, and <sorry>. they're- <laughs> so he's driving. Still driving with the bees there. He's carpooling. He's like driving them to wherever they're going. He's well, their he could Uber be in the, driver. He could be in the HOV lane. Yes. <laughs> He's the Uber driver. Wait, so instead of stopping and getting out, he drives away with the bees. He doesn't realize at first he's on the road. He calls nine one one. You stop immediately and you run (laughs) screaming. Who keeps driving? Well, maybe he was on the road and traffic was moving. I I don't know. So (laughs) okay, okay, I don't don't buy it, but okay. So okay, so um, so they call in this expert. Oh, and also this is interesting too. He was really freaking out because he borrowed this car from his friend. That's the least of his problems. <laughs> He's about but to all- be attacked <laughs> by a swarm of 15,000 bees and he's worried about the friend's car. Well, that's why he didn't want anyone to name him. So he's unnamed oh. in the story because I don't know if he told the friend. But anyway, so they call in the expert. There's a guy there in New Mexico named Jesse Johnson, who's an off-duty firefighter and a paramedic, and he's also a beekeeper. So... <laughs> What happened? Jesse gets there and he says, oh, yeah, what happened here is that the bee colony split and swarmed with the queen into a new location. And the car happened to be that location. It's a nice Buick, roomy backseat. Oh, it's a Buick. (laughs) The bees are just kind of hanging out, right? (laughs) Okay, keep going. Yes. (laughs) Uh, sorry, I thought you were going to say something. So, um, okay, so the the car was just kind of a, a stop along the way. It's just, you know, the bees next stop, <laughs> right? So here's some, <laughs> so here's some news you can use. So if you ever have fifteen thousand bees in your car, you just get a box that has been rubbed with lemongrass oil 
and it Wait, mimics. Did he have lemongrass? Oh no, there's a beekeeper. I see. The beekeeper came with this <laughs> thing, see. and it mimics the scent of the queen, and all of the bees will follow, like the Pied Piper, right? So that's what Jesse Johnson did. He gets the bee, every bee, out of the car in under ten minutes, and then he keeps the bees. You know, so he has several of them at home and um, several of them he kept like two or three <laughs> <laughs> no he has several colonies he's oh, okay. already he already had no, his own I know, bee colonies he, said he kept two or three of the bees from the <laughs> incident no, no. no. <laughs> he, kept, he kept a bunch of them <laughs> so he kept all of them oh, and yeah. he now has all this honey so i think that's like good for him nice yeah, well, he's broken <laughs> anything. He made the, an omelet. He made a the honey question omelet. for me when I was done reading the story was like the guy who owns the Buick. Did he ever tell the, the friend? friend? Yeah, like because this is a whole schmagoo. Like you know, you say, "Oh, can I borrow your car to go to the grocery store for ten minutes?" <laughs> and like you're calling the fire department. There's a beekeeper. Like people and are sensitive I don't know. when they lend a car. They like look at the gas. Did you fill it? You should fill it up with gas again. You probably shouldn't fill it up with fifteen thousand bees. Like there's an probably etiquette not. To these things. <laughs> But I wonder, like, maybe he stole the car. Maybe, like, he oh, said he borrowed the car. The story. Oh. Yeah. I think, like, so maybe, maybe got, the bees got... were karma, you know? <laughs> or the bees were sent there by the owner of the car. <laughs> maybe the owner <laughs> had put them in a box in the back and they were waiting to spring themselves on, on the friend slash on the thief. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a booby trap. We should all do that. We should all put 15,000 bees in a box in the back of our car. In our nemesis cars. That yes. would be amazing. Okay, shut it down, please. Okay. No. Okay. So, nope. But uh, I have a related item, actually, if it's possible that there's another story that's related to that. Um, this <laughs> takes place in Hoboken, New Jersey, right across the river. I could practically see it from my apartment. Um, there was, this was just last week, there was like heavy rain. I guess we had it here, too. I didn't notice. Um, and it's very typical that while we're talking about swarms of bees, that masses of worms emerge from the soil when there's a heavy rain. And you just know, like when you're a kid and there's mud, like there's worms in the mud. And um, the reason for that, I hadn't known this, but I guess it makes sense, is that they breathe through their skin. And when the ground is wet, there's water and they can't breathe. So they come to the surface so they can breathe. Uh -huh. So after this rainstorm in Hoboken, there's a woman walking around and she sees this like swirly form. Um, and she said like, you know, and it was, it was worms. And, a swirly form? In right, what but form? That, what was unusual, <laughs> it, it was unusual, is that it was thousands of writhing worms and they were in a cyclone shape, which of course has become known as the wormnado. Now, oh my God! <laughs> and it it's has disgusting. it has zoologists, entomologists, wormologists. Everybody is baffled by this worm nato. So let's look at the <laughs> the possible evidence to try and connect the dots. Worms, especially when teased out of the ground by the rain, can form herds like a herd of cattle. And there are a picture of these, and it looks like little lumps of ground beef. And they uh -huh. ride around in it, and they do it because <laughs> it's like they, to, I don't know, they like they get the oxygen from each other or something. It's a way to stay out of the rain. Um, and these like act as collective entities, almost like bees, right? And they make quote consensual decisions. Like if there's a consensual decision phenomenon. So like, should we go in this direction? I don't know. Should we go in this direction? Let's all decide what to do. And they communicate by touch. So it's uh, it's a very magical thing. But it is unclear yeah. why in this situation they chose a tornado vortex as their preferred shape for this herd. Um, and they say maybe it was the shape of the ground, like there was a little depression or something. But if you look at the at the videos. I'll tell you why. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> it's no. a sign. <laughs> it's a sign <laughs> from the, of the, of the worm, yeah. of the worm Of the worm apocalypse. Yes. <laughs> First they came in the form. That is ominous as fuck. I'm it, sorry, but it, like it, a it worm the, sculpture. It, it should be a self a consensual decision worm cycle. <laughs> um, that should be the 11th plague at the Passover Seder, like worm. Yes. Totally, totally. Yes. So the scientists, I saw a video with scientists, they have no idea why this happened. Um, alas, it did not last. The woman came back a few hours later. There were still a lot of worms, but they, the uh, the wormnado had dispersed. 
Um, it disbanded. They were kind of yeah. like, all right, well, that was only <laughs> we from did. 3 to 3.15, and now we've got to go to Matt Gates's keynote. We speech. did that. I feel like I feel like we're just going around in circles here. Let's, yeah. <laughs> let's do something else now. Okay, that's why. Well, I just figured I had an item that was another, like, mass insect, whatever a word is. Like, they're really, I think these two things are not unrelated. <laughs> they're gonna, what's next? Oh, and the cicadas are coming up. Yeah, um, this like, is the animals are clustering together. I read <laughs> yeah. this dystopian horror novel about deer clustering together. It involves oh, really, deer. yeah. Oh, that sounds so, like my kind of thing. Do you remember what it's called? The deer, um, the deer cluster. <laughs> 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 the deer cluster was kind of just like a symptom. It's called Leave the World Behind oh, by no, Ruman no. Alam. It's excellent. Yeah. No, I'll read it now. Okay. Yeah. So nope to the bees and nope to the worms and animals and humans should not mix, as we have no, said for many years. Absolutely not. This no. Okay. No, I thank have, you. I have one, <laughs> one final item. This one comes from Georgia, not New Jersey. Um, this is a story about a repair shop, a high end auto repair shop in Peachtree City, Georgia, uh, called A. A-OK, which is just the letters A-OK, Walker's mm -hmm. Luxury Auto Works. And there's a guy who worked there. His name is Andreas Flatten, or Flayton. Um, and he was really good at this high-end luxury repair. He had been recruited to come work there. And as a condition of his going to work there, he had to care for his child. So they had made an arrangement that he had to be able to leave at 5 o'clock every day to go pick his child up from child care. Very reasonable. Okay. Um, and then at some point, the owner, a guy named Miles Walker, decided that Andreas could no longer leave early to pick his child up from daycare. And that led What's to other... What's he supposed to do? Well, like, that led to I mean... other disputes. So Fla Andreas gave notice. Um, uh -huh. And it was so bad that, as I would probably, walked off the job even earlier before his notice. Um, so he waited months for his final paycheck, which you have to do, right? And uh, his final week's wages did not arrive. And uh, Flayton filed a claim with the Department of Labor. Labor contacted the owner, Walker, three times. No response. Then... On March 12th, this was in the Times, so you know it's true. On March 12th, uh, Andreas's doorbell rang, and we have the footage from the doorbell cam. And it was a, quote, young man with long, wavy hair on his front porch. And he shouted, hey, your money's at the end of the driveway, bud. Um, so Andreas went outside, and at the end of the driveway, he found that it was blocked by a mountain of pennies. And he like a really big mountain of pennies there's a picture and what's worse is that they stank and attached to it was an envelope with a pay stub but there was no check in there so it's obvious oh that God. he was being paid uh in pennies and it turns out that there were 91,500 pennies there <laughs> so what do you do at that point like you can't it reminds just... me of that song from Rent, like 91,500 <laughs> pennies. He could have counted one every day of his life and he wouldn't yeah. have finished. <laughs> um, so and you can't just ignore it and like rip up the check. You got to do something. It's blocking his driveway. So he tried putting 500 penny, pounds of pennies into his wheelbarrow. The wheels collapsed on the wheelbarrow. He tried to clean them because they were soaked in motor oil. Um so he couldn't even like pick them up. There's a picture of this. They're like slippery. So first he tried a vat of Dawn dish soap with white vinegar and water, which I guess he researched, I guess, from the Exxon Valdez or something. That's the way to like uh -huh. clean, clean pennies. Um, it didn't work. And he realized that he was going to have to wash each one individually. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this, this presupposes sad. that there's no this... bulk way to, like, rid yourself of these. Like, this sort of implies you want the money. You just don't want I it mean, to be dirty. I mean, can he get a task rabbit? Like... <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know how you would post that job listing. <laughs> Well, it took it, no, because the, the pay wouldn't be worth it because it took him two hours to clean five dollars worth of pennies. So, so this is a, to just this is break even, to just break even, right? <laughs> to just break even, you would have to pay the task rabbit two fifty an hour. Otherwise, so you're he operating needs to a lot. sue the, these people. This is this is not. Well, you can't do this. Well, there's possible liability, which has not been pursued because because they were covered in motor oil. That counts as dumping hazardous waste. And there is yeah. a freshwater creek at the bottom of this guy's hill. So technically, it could uh, pollute that creek. So 
what are the sorts of comeuppance you get? Well, this was posted to social media, went viral, of course, and the Yelp complaints started uh, piling in, like who would want to ever give their business to this place? Um, but no, the Times called the the body shop to ask whatever the to luxury, get a comment. The luxury, whatever. <laughs> right, yeah. right, the luxury body shop. A woman answered the phone and she said, business is booming. Um, now, I would argue that she is not a reliable narrator, right? No. <laughs> right. But they are capitalizing it. If you go to their website, their logo actually is like this weird, you know, on like the Halloween or escape rooms, how it's like dripping blood, like blood manner thing. It's like that is the is the type for the logo. And it says, and yes, we accept pennies in, as payment. They are cash! Exclamation. So <clears throat> he's looked into it and they found out, in fact, there is no recourse because technically... Uh, it's legal tender, and being oily does not make it not legal tender. Wow, that terrible. is terrible. It's a sad story. It it's is... a tragedy. But I do have a lot of questions, and it's it's more on the Walker side, on the guy who paid the pennies. So the question is, how did you get that many pennies? Could you just, like, walk into a bank with, like, a roll of hundreds or cash a check and say, I'd like that in and pennies, say, please? Pennies. And it's like, what do they give you, like, 500 rolls of pennies? And then how did you get... How did he get the oil on the pennies? Did like he have? I a... think he hired a task rabbit. <laughs> it's the battle of the task rabbits. It, it's what's powering the task rabbit economy. <laughs> it's all, the, all the oily pennies. So nope, that's my last nope. I'm going to nope. shut that down. Absolutely Don't pay people not. in cash or check or what something not uh, or U.S. bonds not not oily pennies. Okay. That is all our notes. Now we're going to move on to our yups. These are the little rays of light, the little beacons of hope that got us to the week. Rachel, what do you have? Well, yeah, um, this is a weird one, but my up this week goes to Robert Altman's 1974 movie, California Split, starring Elliot Gould and George Siegel. Oh, uh, they're kind of the, they're kind Siegel's of the father. Yeah, they, I feel like they just died. Like both of them just died. Although I Did get they? this wrong with Laverne and Shirley. No, I, don't, well, I feel like I, don't I feel know. like they're kind of the same person. Um George Siegel just which is the one that was on Just Shoot Me? George Siegel, right? George Siegel. I yeah, think, he yeah. just died. Okay. Anyway, I'm always yeah. wrong about these. I hope you're all both alive and well. Anyway. Well, I so, think Elliot Gould is still alive. He was in Oceans Twelve. I don't, I don't know. know. Anyway. Okay. So um they play a pair of gamblers and they're, you know, gambling addicts. And it's just great. There's like these big scenes with all these people talking. I have no idea like, <laughs> right. what, what is happening. It sounds or like a great happen. movie. <laughs> it's a big scene with lots of people talking and I have no idea what's happening. It sounds exactly like my kind of movie. <laughs> but that is that is why I'm giving it a yup because I would like think that this would be terrible. Yet I was transfixed by it and I had no idea what was going on or or what was happening yet i was so compelled and i think it's one of the greatest movies i've ever seen <laughs> and i can't stop talking about it and, and i yet, think it's also <laughs> because like we miss being in like busy rooms with a lot of people and like just many conversations happening at once and i feel like in covid to watch a movie like that it's like oh my god that that was the way the world right we're stuck was. in like my dinner with andre now which is like one-on-one -on -one, two people <laughs> in a restaurant <laughs> two people in a restaurant okay so i won't be watching that my <laughs> My up, my up goes to the dog whisperer, Cesar Milan. Finally, somebody is taking Major, the Biden dog, Major's side. You may remember he had some sort of biting incident and they shipped him off to Delaware. We rushed to his defense a few weeks ago. I'm glad some oh, yeah. experts are. He had a great quote. This is an article in Politico. Um, he said, it's not the dog. What Major is saying is that he doesn't feel safe yet in the White House. And if he doesn't feel safe, he can't trust. And if he can't trust, he can't feel confident. Um, it's a place full of tension. And yeah. that's that's what we were saying. You don't have to be a dog whisperer to know that, but he's completely right. I mean, he's right. I'm glad someone is standing up for Major. Yeah, Coco's had some outbursts from time to time. And it's, <laughs> yes. it's, it's not just not a bad dog, just like he gets riled up. She gets excited, you know, she's friendly. She wants to be part of things, you know. And she's, who among uh... us doesn't? <laughs> no, we all totally. we all want to be in a big Robert Altman movie party. <laughs> <laughs> including Major and Coco. Okay, that's all we have for this week. Okay. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, if you've enjoyed this podcast, 
podcast, please rate, review, subscribe, tell a friend in real life. That's the best way. Yeah, please. Um, yeah. Tweet at us. Oh, yeah. We forget to. We, we need to start saying that again. At Brian Hecht, at Rachel D. We always respond to tweets, except when we don't. But we always appreciate them. Um, so that's it. It's been a ter- it. terrible, terrible week. But we've enjoyed making this podcast. Uh, thanks for listening. This is Nope. The podcast where we shut it down. Mm-hmm.